We've done a lot of talking about interstellar empires on this channel, from the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov to Dune by Frank Herbert. And as much of science fiction depicts, realistically I think, in a galactic civilization consisting of billions of humans, it would be near impossible for one government to truly maintain rule over all humans. There would almost certainly be dissenters, those that reject the hierarchy and wish to form their own way. In the Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons, the Ousters was the name given to the genetically distinct group of humans which existed outside of the control of the hegemony of man and populated the outer rims of human space. The Ousters varied widely in culture and physiology because they had adapted to the environments of many different worlds. The Ousters developed a number of augmentations allowing them to become more suitable for the environments in which they lived. Some appear mostly human except for elongated and animal-like limbs, and some have webbed fingers or coats of fur. All of these differences are genetically superficial however. All Ousters are in fact human and have the potential to reproduce with other humans within the galaxy. The genetic adaptations were necessary and self-inflicted. They were required in order for the ousters to survive even in the vacuum of space. Ouster angels are a division of ousters who are fully adapted to the vacuum. They exist adjacent other clusters of ousters in orbital forest strings or other such microgravity conditions. Angels can feed off sunlight and possess the ability to communicate via bioradio transmissions. Ousters came to be before humanity's big mistake, which would render the planet Earth uninhabitable, and the Hajira which followed. In the beginning days of space colonization, numerous ships were sent out into the vacuum of space, headed for faraway star systems. These ships contained altered human beings, embedded with nanotechnology which could allow them to adapt quickly to extraterrestrial environments. These humans sent out into the cosmos in cryogenic chambers would go on to form the groups referred to as the Ousters. Because of the need to survive in space, a lot of the technological innovation among the Ousters was related to the optimization of life in low gravity environments. For example, many Ousters had implanted wings which could be extended outward. Soldiers wore suits which included mechanical tails serving as extra limbs or weaponry. Ouster ships also possessed these tentacle-like appendages, capable of gripping enemy ships. Though they were thought of by many in the hegemony as backward barbarians, the Ousters actually had created incredible works of engineering. Eventually the Ousters would even help with the engineering of the Star Tree Biosphere, which would be home to Templars, Ousters, and even alien species. The Star Tree was technically a Dyson Spear. The concept of the Dyson Spear was first described by Olaf Stapledon in the book Star Maker, but it was popularized and named for Freeman Dyson, who wrote in his paper Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation, published in 1960, that such a megastructure would be a necessity to a sufficiently advanced enough civilization. A Dyson Spear would be the only way that such a civilization could hope to possess enough power to supply its energy needs. A Dyson Spear could harness the power of a star by completely encompassing it. The star tree of the Hyperion Cantos is one of many versions of a Dyson Spear to show up in science fiction. The Ouster home swarm itself was constructed of many asteroids, kept inside of containment field tubes. Water streams connected several of these tubes, allowing the Ousters to travel between different habitats. The Ousters who had sequestered themselves from the rest of humanity during the Hegira understood the damage that forecasting caused to the void which binds. Due to this, they were against the use of them for transportation. The Ousters also only used conventional methods of space travel, which means it took them much longer to move from place to place. Ousters are also known to form migration clusters. 
Swarms of ships which traveled through the stars together. These clusters of ships can number in the thousands and contain many kinds of vessels. Small ships which consisted of only a single person and even terraformed asteroids home to tens of thousands of humans. Throughout the hegemony's existence, tensions between them and the Alsters had continued to increase. Unlike the hegemony who chose to colonize and terraform worlds, the Alsters had chosen to colonize space itself, harvesting the resources of comets and asteroids. Several armed conflicts took place among the hegemony's outback worlds, and these tensions would eventually lead to a war between the hegemony and the Alsters. The Alsters would, however, outlive the hegemony, and later even Pax, continuing to evolve and adapt to the ever-changing universe in which they lived. The consul, who had spent time among the Alsters, said this in Book 1 of the Hyperion Cantos. I will not try to describe the beauty of life in a swarm. Their zero-gravity globe cities and comet farms and thrust clusters. Their micro-orbital forest and migrating rivers and 10,000 colors and textures of life at Rendezvous Week. Suffice it to say that I believe the Alsters have done what web humanity has not in the past millennia. Evolved. While we live in our derivative cultures, pale reflections of old earth life, the Alsters have explored new dimensions of aesthetics and ethics and biosciences and art and all the things that must change and grow to reflect the human soul. I believe that it is plausible to assume that if the Alsters continue to evolve, that eventually their DNA will diverge enough from normal human genetics that they will no longer truly be human, but perhaps several new species. Then again, who is to say that it would be they that were inhuman, and not the others who had chosen to stagnate, to forego evolution for familiarity or security? Perhaps it is the ousters who are honoring the natural progression of the human species. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Ideas of Ice and Fire. Also, follow me on Twitter and check out the Ideas of Ice and Fire subreddit. And if you really want to support this channel, click the Patreon link in the description.